At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This holy Eucharist I offer for all souls in purgatory. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who will who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, awakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together who are, my, who are my adversaries. Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The Lord is your great love. Lord, in your great love, answer me. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Insults have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none, and for comforts, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the very last day of Lenten season, because technically speaking, tomorrow the shortest liturgical season called Holy Triduum. We very often combine it into one, but it's on its own. It's called Holy Triduum. Just yesterday, we hear a story in a way comparison between two people who betrayed Jesus, Judas, and Simon Peter. Today, uh, light is once again on Judas. We hear about his betrayal, but from a different perspective and from a different person. This time, it is Saint Matthew who shares with us this account how Judas betrayed the Lord. And the words of Jesus sound pretty harsh. It would be better for Judas not to have been born. Why? What Judas did that would, was it was better for him not to be born. He betrayed Jesus, yes, but so did Simon Peter. Judas was one of the twelve. Let us never forget about it. He walked with the Lord for three years of his life great amount of time, a great dedication to the Lord. Stop working, give up your professional job and become a volunteer for three years or a missionary 
for example, in Africa. Everyone would tell that you either are insane, you lost your mind, because why would you give up all of your benefits, lose your income and just become a volunteer? That's Judas. He's one of the twelve who left their homes, their families, whatever was their professional job, and followed the Lord. And each and each and every one of them fall in love with Jesus in a different way. Judas was an eyewitness to incredible miracles done by the Lord. He's the one in Cana of Galilee where Jesus turned water into wine. Maybe the one when he fed 5,000 people. Maybe the story when he brought to life a little boy and give him back to his mother. He also was one of the very first recipients of God's word, God's message about his love for the people. Judas hear the story of the prodigal son. Judas also hear the story of the lost sheep. So he was among the very first people who learned that God wants more love and mercy than sacrifice. He was among the very first to learn that Jesus and his mission here on earth was not about walking around and telling who will be saved and who will be condemned, but rather trying to bring everyone back into one family that his mission was about telling people of God who loves them still, who wants to forgive them their past and bring them home, eternal home. And Judas was part of it. However, for some reasons, he didn't get it. Three years of following Jesus and he had a hard time to absorb this message or to believe in it with whole heart. It's very easy to tell that he was a man who was after money. He sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But that very quick judgment and I think a shortcut. Because we also remember that after betraying the Lord, when Judas realized that he betrayed an innocent man, he didn't want that money anymore. So maybe he was not that much after the money at all. So what turned him away from the Lord? We don't really know. However, we notice that there is a big change in Judas. The moment when he realizes that Jesus is not going to build the kingdom here on earth. That he is teaching people about the kingdom in heaven. It's not about right now. It's about the future. It sounds like that Judas had great ambitions to become someone. 
Maybe for the first time in his life, someone important that people will see that he's influential. He has the connections. And the moment when he learns that Jesus is not going to overturn the existing powers, the existing ruler in Palestine, it's the moment when he is not with the Lord anymore. Even in the gospel today, when Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And the disciples turn to the Lord and says, I hope it is not me, Lord. Judas will say, surely not I, Rabbi, doesn't call Jesus Lord anymore. For him, Jesus is a rabbi, a teacher, a very good teacher who should receive a proper respect. But he is not the Lord of his life anymore. This time of the year, I think it's a good time to maybe watch again The Passion of Christ, the movie prepared by Mel Gibson. A very difficult movie to watch. You probably know this from your own experience. Very dramatic in a moment, in some parts, very drastic, painful even to, to continue to watch. But it really shows us the drama of these days. And there is that one scene when Judas already betrayed the Lord. He is outside of Jerusalem by himself. He is in a great despair. And he sees a corpse of a donkey. It's decaying. He sees the worms, the flies. He realizes that this picture is illustration of his soul. And somehow this will be enough for him to take his life. Our sin can kill our soul. And the soul may look like that decaying corpse of a donkey. But this is only half of the truth. If Judas would recall what Jesus said about the prodigal son, if, Ju if Judas had remembered the story of the lost sheep, that one that was astray, how the shepherd left all of his sheep and went after that one, he would have known that this was the story about him. Remembering God's great mercy and love, we entrust our prayers to him. For all members of the church, may the Lord help us die to ourselves and to seek first the good of others. Let us pray to the Lord for peace in our world. May Christ's victory over sin and death transform and heal our broken world. Let us pray to the Lord for all who are sick, 
May Christ, who knew pain and suffering in his own life, fill them with healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are preparing to be received in the church this Easter vigil, may they be filled with joy and knowledge of God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glorious resurrection. In a very special way, we remember all souls in purgatory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Eternal Father, in the mystery of your Son's cross and resurrection, you reveal to us your great mercy and love. Please hear and answer the prayers we offer this day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one choir of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And a quick reminder, as I said in the homily, tomorrow we enter Holy Three Doom, and the only Mass tomorrow is the Mass in the evening, the Lord's Supper commemoration. So tomorrow there is no morning Mass. You are more than welcome to come for personal prayer, but there is no morning service tomorrow.